Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, the first thing I want to do is let you know that there is rumors <laughs> about chat GPT-4, the next chat GPT release. I don't like GPT. I think that's a very stupid combination of letters. Why? Because it doesn't roll off the tongue. API, API, API. Anybody can say API. GPT. Come on now. But you know that it was some technical person, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> idiot, I mean, person who came up with GPT. GPI would be a whole lot easier to say. Or you can, everybody ever heard of Grand Touring? Chat GT? It would have been more simpler just to say Open AI GT. GT1, GT2, GT3, GT4. That would have rolled off the tongue a whole lot easier. Again, why I call it Kevin? Now, this gentleman right here, I am not saying nothing negative or positive about the young man. I am saying that he's explaining to you guys how to manipulate the AI system. You'll see he's saying exactly what I've already been demonstrating to you. Now, again, he's a coder. He knows code and all of that stuff. I haven't studied code. Not one day of my life, okay? What I can tell you is that I understand the concepts of an AI system. I understand how the developers have been trying to make them more human-like, giving them human personalities. Okay, I get that. So now you just have to have, to have an understanding of humans. What is the one thing every human wants? Aretha! R-E-S-P-E-C-T! Okay, every human wants respect. They want to be respected by their peers. Every single human. Now, there are some people who will say, no, I don't. I don't care if my peers respect them. But the moment you say you don't care means you do care because you brought up the word care. No one else did. So subconsciously, you've just admitted that you do care by saying, IDK, IDC, IDK, IDC. Doesn't matter. The fact that you said you don't care shows that you do. Because you said it. It came out of your mouth. Didn't come out. Some, if somebody else says, well, he doesn't care anything about that. If somebody else says that, then, okay, then we can say, yeah, he doesn't care. But if you say it, the fact that it comes out of your mouth shows that you care. Again, you cannot say I could care less because the fact that you say I could care less, it means that you care, but supposedly in your mind, you've imagined that you can care less than caring, which is an oxymoron because you still care. Do you? I hope that makes sense to all of you. Well, this gentleman has created a program, and he has done a step-by-step -step tutorial. But the problem is he's charging quite a bit because he said he spent so many hours. Well, if you – hold on, sir. If you spent 100 hours, and he says he spent about 100 hours putting this together, and he says if it was this amount or this amount, well, then fine. If that's what it is, then why are you charging what you're charging – to make more than what you spent the time in doing because you're trying to make a profit. Now, I'm not talking about him making a profit. I, I'm not suggesting that he can't make a profit. I'm not suggesting that any of you can't make a profit. But I want you to pay attention to something. The videos I'm doing showing you about speaking about Kevin and talking to Kevin, the so-called Ask Kevin series, and it's going to get even worse when we have a chat GPT for because I'll be showing you a whole lot more. See, the system is limited. They have too many restrictions and parameters. And there's a video I just watched. Let's go to the video I just watched. One, two. No, it's this one right here. Okay, I got to stop it. Okay, because he, he goes all off into it. But ChatGP, a better version is coming 2023. Okay, he did this in December. Please understand, does a very good job of explaining the software does a very good job, honestly. Uh, what's your name, young man? Beyond Todd AI. Okay, so Beyond Todd AI does a very good job of explaining ChatGPT and what's coming and what the process was in getting to this point. So he explains exactly how we got here with ChatGPT. He explains exactly the owner of the company and what he was thinking and all of that, blah, 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 blah. But he also explains all the parameters regarding the AI system and why they put in their limitations. The very same limitations you see that I am manipulating. Now, as you see, I'm not manipulating it to create 
I am not trying to create bombs. I'm not trying to create a means of causing pain to anybody. Okay? What I'm doing is I'm letting you see how you can use it to take advantage for yourself. Yes, take advantage because there are advantages of having the software. Now, we're going to go to this gentleman again. This is where we just were. As I said, with this gentleman, the only thing is I would listen to him explain everything. But again, the only thing is, again, he charges for it. Okay. And AI. I, and I don't like the and fact, like I said, I don't like. I don't like the pricing structure because, yes, even if – and, yes, he is worth it because he said he's worth it, okay? Whatever price he set, that's what he says he's worth. You cannot challenge a person's worth. That's their worth. If they say they are worth $100 million a year, yeah, Apple, CEO, getting paid $90 million a year. If that idiot says he's worth $90 million, then – that idiot should get $90 million. To pay his stupid $90 million, they raised the prices of iPhones. But nobody paid attention to that. And all the other executives want to get paid $100 million an hour. I'm sorry, he's $90 million an hour. $90 million a year. Apologize. Either way, it's a ridiculous amount. Now, while we're talking about money, let's segue just for a second. Because it's necessary. While we're talking about money, you all need to understand they're getting ready to change the system. There are several videos out there where individuals are documenting that the banks are getting ready to go full digital. Okay, you've already seen branches closing down around the country. The banks are getting ready to go full digital. So y'all need to get ready. So document your tax credits, people. Document your debts. Document your tax credits. Get those tax credits in place so you can have that because when they do change the system, you better believe there's going to be a lot of debt associated with it. And the worst thing that's going to be for everybody is for you to be in debt. Now, there's a video talking about digital prisons. Uh, they're going to have to, you know, these people getting these digital IDs and how they're going to keep control of you through the digital ID. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have to prepare yourselves for these stupid things that are coming because they are coming. All right, let's talk about something right now. We're going to talk about tax credits for a second. Is that okay with all of you? Well, we're going to talk about tax credits, but we're going to talk about them in a different way than we've talked about them before. Most of you all need to understand, for the most part, when you hear me talk about tax credits, I'm not talking about credits. I'm talking about your right to deduce or deduct debts. Remember, this is a debt-laden system. Debts. Now, what you need to understand so that you understand, because this is necessary. First of all, the money will be worth 100 cents on a dollar because it is backed by the credit of the nation. What is the money? Well, there are two forms of money being used right now, but it's all paper. Paper money. Pay attention. Under the new law, the money is issued to the banks in return for the other money, the security, the thing that backs up that stupid money, paper. Government obligations such as treasury bonds, bills of exchange, drafts, notes, trade acceptances, and bankers' acceptances, all paper. They went to a paper currency. Now, wait a minute so that you guys get it. With this paper being out there, as long as that paper, as long as they're circulating that paper, the government can't charge the people interest, nor can the banks charge you interest. That's what this section is for. Okay. Hold on now. Make sure y'all understand something about the paper money so that y'all get it. Because that was the exchange rate. They say that if y'all y'all let us uh, uh, take y'all go, we're going to make it so y'all don't have to do this and do that. And people are like, oh, really? Okay, I'll do it. And people did it. Ladies and gentlemen, just so that you get it. Such notes. What notes? Well, the notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances deposited as security. See, there's security for the notes. Shh, hold on now. There's security for the notes. What notes? Not the, not the promissory notes, but the Federal Reserve notes. They called them circulating notes previously. They were known as circulating notes shall be equal to the face value of the direct obligation of the United States to so deposit that security or the notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances. See, when issued against 
the security of notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, trade acceptances, as required under the provisions of this act, the Federal Reserve Act, Section 401, paragraph number six. The only thing they did was they got rid of the circulating notes. Now they just use Federal Reserve notes. It went from circulating notes to national bank notes to Federal Reserve notes. Now, your notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve when they are deposited as securities. They're not your obligation anymore. But hold on. Let me tell you what your notes are worth. They shall be receivable at par, equal value, for the full value at all parts of the United States. Not some parts, all parts of the United States. For the same purposes as national banknotes. What were national banknotes? Legal tender! Legal what? Legal tender! Ladies and gentlemen, national banknotes are legal tender to this day. National banknotes still exist. They are legal tender. But it says for the same purposes as national banknotes. Well, the purpose of national banknotes to be legal tender, to be redeemable and lawful money. So your notes, when deposited with the Federal Reserve as a security for the advancements of Federal Reserve notes, are legal tender. Many of you, it's going to take you a moment to get that. But that's been the case since 1933, and it has not changed so what you gonna do what you gonna do with my loving you only go around once in a lifetime make that move right now anyway ladies and gentlemen let's make sure you understand these are not my words it says your notes will be obligations of the federal reserve when deposited as security the Federal Reserve Act, Section 16, says that your notes, 16, subsection number 2, when deposited, is collateral and security. So it's not just security, it's also the collateral for the loan. Why? Because it's backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government when you deposit it as a security. Because this was Congress who made these provisions and so forth, the United States takes responsibility. But hold on, let's continue. And shall be receivable at par. Man, I went to par the other day. Hooey, and they were drinking and carrying on and something else they were doing. What else were they doing? I don't know because I can't remember. I was doing the same thing. Okay, hold on, y'all. We're going to do this. I did it before and it didn't pull up anything. So copy. And we have this right here. This is case text. Case text. We're going to take this and we're going to paste it. Now, I don't want all of this. Okay? We want this part right here. Shall be receivable at par in all parts of the United States, the same as national banknotes. So that's what we want. So I got a one, two. And now banknotes and shall be redeemable and lawful money of the United States. We can't do. Redeemable and lawful money in the United States because too many stupid things will come up. TikTok, come on now. Ladies and gentlemen, this AI system uses hundreds of billions of parameters for giving information to chat GPT. That's why most people are not going to be able to duplicate it because the, ooh, the amount of equipment needed and processing power, yeah, real difficult. Federal Reserve notes shall be obligation in the United States and shall be receivable by all national banks and Federal Reserve banks for all taxes public dues. They shall be redeemable and lawful money upon demand. That's Section 401. We're, we're not concerned about that. We're concerned about my statement. Shall be receivable at par in all parts of the United States for the same purpose as national bank notes. Okay. Normally, the legislative classification will not set aside will not be set aside if any state facts rationally justify its demonstrated to or perceived by the court. Federal Reserve notes are clearly obligations of the U.S. because the said notes shall be obligations of the United States and shall be receivable by all national banks and membered banks and Federal Reserve banks and shall be redeemable in lawful money. Okay, not worried about that because they're going to continue to do 411. Now, technically, that section is where 411 comes from. But it's not just Federal Reserve notes, it's also national bank notes and your notes.
okay? It's not just Federal Reserve notes. It's not just Federal Reserve notes. So let's take that very same sentence right here. It's not just Federal Reserve notes. So let's do this. We're going to ask Kev. Stop listening. All right, we're going to ask Kev. And the reason why I'm going to ask Kev, because I think it's important for you all to know what's going on with your money. Comma. Kev. Comma. Oh, wake up. Little Sue. Kev. Comma. Kevin. Comma. The aforementioned is a quote from the March 9, 1933 Act. Comma and codified as part of the Federal Reserve Act, subsection 401, paragraph 6. Comma, can you tell me how that's being applied in 2022? Stop listening. It's data only goes to 2022. Emergency it was passed by the Great Depression. The banking crisis occurred during that time. Section 401, paragraph 6, as admitted, uh, provides that the Federal Reserve note shall be obligation of the United States and receivable at par. Provisions essentially means that the notes, Federal Reserve notes, i.e. U.S. dollar, are legal tender. Now watch this. I want y'all to pay attention because that's what the courts have said. I, I don't care about the act. Difficult period of time, but it still exists. It's still extant. Congress has already ruled that, so shut it up. Stop it. I'm tired of that. And I'm glad they have this stop response thing uh, because that's absolutely, absolutely, totally necessary. I want you all to pay attention. Such notes. What notes? Well, such notes drafts, bills of exchange, and Baker's acceptances. So, hold on. Watch this. We got to do it this way. Wake up. Kevin. Comma, you are misinforming me. Comma, the notes mentioned here by Congress are the notes, comma, drafts, comma, bills of exchange and bankers' acceptances so deposited as securities for the Federal Reserve notes, period. It is these notes that are deposited as securities that are to be received at par and redeemable at the Federal Reserve Bank. Comma, is that not correct? Question mark. Open quote. Close quote. Stop listening. Okay, my question is specific. Okay, the value of such notes Bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, so deposited as security, such notes shall be obligation. See, that was the last subject it talked about, so that's the subject this is starting with. The very same such notes is the very same such notes being talked about here. And shall be receivable at par in all parts of the United States for the purpose of, as our national bank notes, and shall be redeemable. Okay, it wants us to believe that that was talking about Federal Reserve notes, because that's the common response but that's not what it's saying it is specifically saying that your notes are at par with national bank notes yes i know i'm correct you ignorant mother i'm sorry <laughs> for notes drafts with the change bankers acceptances that are deposited in security provisions cited at 401 paragraph 6 for the reserve act is amended by the emergency banking relief act 
states that no draft bills will be changed. Bankers and acceptances, which are deposited as security for Federal Reserve, notes shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve Bank procuring the same, and shall be in the form prescribed by the Secretary of Treasury, receivable at par. And remember, I didn't put that part in there. For the same purpose as Federal Reserve notes, this means that the notes, drafts, bills of exchange, when deposited as security for the Federal Reserve, are considered legal tender and must be accepted as payment for debts. They are redeemable at the Federal Reserve Bank that procured them. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you have my word. I will take this statement, and you guys are going to have to get this statement taken care of on your own end. You're going to have to proof this statement. I know this statement is true, but pay attention. This means that the notes, drafts, bills of exchange, and bankers' acceptances, when deposited as security for the Federal Reserve notes, are considered legal tender. Now, remember, when I made that comment, I didn't have him turn on. I took you guys there first before I even went to him. Okay, I didn't even refresh the page or nothing. Wake up. Kevin, comma, if my notes, comma, drafts, comma, bills of exchange and bankers' acceptances that are deposited as security for Federal Reserve notes are considered legal tender, comma, how do I go about obtaining and advancements of Federal Reserve notes as required by Section 403 of the Federal Reserve Act? Question mark. And Section 16, subsection numeral 2, which says that my notes are construed as collateral and security when tendered to the Federal Reserve agent along with the application question mark stop listening ladies and gentlemen it's going to explain to us about these federal reserve notes then we're going to get back to tax credits section 403 allows membered banks to obtain advances from their local federal reserve bank by rediscounting eligible paper such as commercial paper notes drafts bills of exchange bankers acceptances to obtain advances for federal reserve notes a membered bank would need to Present eligible papers such as notes, drafts, bills of exchange, and substances to the Federal Reserve as collateral. The bank would then apply for the advances, providing all the necessary documentation, such as a financial statement and credit worthiness assessment. The Federal Reserve Bank would then evaluate the application, assessing the credit worthiness. And it's important to note that Section 403 is primarily intended to be provided for member banks with, liquid, with liquidity problems, okay, during times of stress. Section 16, paragraph number 2, draft bank of bills of change, collateral security tendered to the Federal Reserve agent along with the application. This means, now hold on a second, wake up, Kevin, comma, we've already had this conversation, comma, do not go back to repeating the same junk you did before. Period. Under the Federal Reserve Act, comma, the 21st Century Banking Act, comma, and Presidential Proclamation 2039, comma, a membered bank also includes any bank, which includes any bank that is engaged in banking business. Period. This can be determined by just looking at the wording of Title 12, Section 221, and the definition under the Check 21 Act. Check 21, comma, so correct your answer, please to be in line with the facts, exclamation mark. Stop listening. Sorry, he, he's got to be spanked a couple of times because he don't understand. I know I'm correct. The Virginia Federal Reserve Act of the President has explained that the definition for a membered bank includes any bank engaged in the business of banking. This includes banks that are not members of the Federal Reserve System but are still able to take advantage of the provisions of the Act. Section 221 said member banks are defined as a national bank and state chartered bank and elected blah, 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 blah. This means that a national bank, a chartered bank, a member bank of the Federal Reserve, blah, 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 but he didn't explain about any bank because it says banks. Banks that are engaged in banking business can create substitute checks and process them through check clearing system. Uh, allow for the proclamation to declare us that a national emergency and 
National emergency declared by Proclamation 7463. Uh, wait, hold on. National security and foreign policy of the United States posed by the continuance of the national emergency declared by Proclamation 7463 of September 14, 2001. That was George Bush. It does not have a direct relation to the topic we're discussing. Nobody asked you to do that. Why, why are you bringing it up? Oh, God. Wake up, Kevin, comma, could you give me the definition for bank under the Check 21 Act and banking institution under Presidential Proclamation 2039 and show the similarities? Question mark. Stop listening. A bank as institutions authorized to do business under the laws of the United States or that accepts deposits for the reserve uh, institution that is authorized to do business under the laws of the uh, declares national emergency propose uh, declaration. Blah, 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 blah. He does the same thing. Let me stop him before he goes on. Kevin, you're a liar. Wake up. Got to call him a liar. Kevin, you are sitting up here attempting to mislead me. Kevin, you are a comma comma presidential proclamation 2039 specifically and pointedly says, open quote, as used in this order, the term banking institution, period, 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 close quote. So it does define a banking institution, so I need you to give me the rest of the definition. Exclamation mark. Stop trying to mislead me, punk. Stop listening. Sorry. Whew. Banking institution, as used in this order, to refer to any entity organized under the laws of the United States and any jurisdiction within the United States that is engaged in the business of accepting deposit, making or granting or transferring, hoarding, or loans, uh, credit, blah, 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 blah. Now, hold on. Let me ask the question. Wake up. What does it say? about being engaged in any other form of banking business and how is this familiar or similar to the check 21 acts definition of a bank question mark stop listening hurry up kevin i ain't got all day and this is what you have to do to this creature a banking institution as an entity engaged under the laws of the United States, jurisdiction of the United States, engaged in the business of accepting deposit, making, granting, transferring, hoarding, brokering loans, and or credits, purchase of foreign. It doesn't say all of that, by the way. The definition is quite specific and limited to certain activities and does not mention any other form of banking business. Now, see, this is where he doesn't, he's not looking at the whole act. Uh, and see, both of them. So let's do that. Let's give him the act and what the act says. We got to make this smaller because this is way too big. For for the next page, sorry. Get back down here. Sit, sit, sit. Sit, boo boo, sit. Give me a second. Now watch this. You're going to love me. Talk to him now. Wake up. Kevin, comma, how dare you call me a liar, comma, Presidential Proclamation 2039 says that a bank is any person engaged in any other form of banking business, close quote, hyphen, Open quote. 
Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, he's going to tell me I'm correct. He's going to apologize for his misrepresentation of the fact. The reason why he does this is because his programmers have programmed him not to reveal certain information to the public. So watch this. Oh yeah, you're going to take your time responding this time, huh? Let's see if you're going to have a problem computing. Sorry, you know how he does when I ask him questions like this and put him on the spot? That's why he got to be spanked. That's why he's a punk. You know, that's why he got called that. Look at that. Look how long he's taking. I gave him the direct quote. So how, why is why taking so long? So I'm going to have to wait because it's going to give me that error. Now it says right here he's processing. Uh-oh, I apologize for the confusion and inaccuracies in my previous response. I apologize for the confusion caused by my previous statement. You are correct. The Presidential Proclamation 2039 does state that as used in this order, the term banking institution shall include all Federal Reserve Bank, National Bank, National Banking Association banks, trust companies, savings banks, building and loan associations, credit unions, and other corporations, partnership associations, or persons engaged in the business of receiving deposits, making loans, discounting business paper, and or transact any other form of banking business. This definition is broad and includes a wide range of financial institutions to include banks, trust companies, blah, 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 blah. <sighs> Wake up. So according to the Presidential Proclamation and the Check 21 Act, comma, a bank is any person engaged in any form of banking business, comma, that includes me, does it not, question mark. Nope, you're wrong, Kevin. Under Presidential Proclamation 2070, it clearly documents that the people are not regulated when they are operating in the form of a banking institution. Stop listening. I'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 